Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host Faisal Vatu from Fremont, California. Medical and healthcare industry has gone through major advancements in 20th century and the pattern just accelerated in 21st century. According to some estimates, the average human lifespan globally has increased from 62 years to 72 years in the last 40 years. Most of these advancements have happened in medication, surgical, and diagnostic processes. As many of you know, in parallel, IT industry and digital ecosystem has also flourished and has made major leap forward. The key question is, how can healthcare and medical industry benefit and leverage more and more from IT infrastructure and digital transformation? For this, we'll be talking to a lot of leaders, both from healthcare and IT industry, to understand what does that intersection look like. So stay tuned for a lot of those discussions on this channel. Today, we are fortunate to have Dr. Sheena Marazes on our channel for this show. Dr. Sheena is CEO and co-founder of a company called Simple Health Kit. This company was formed on a vision to provide clinical grade diagnostic, which is accurate, affordable, and accessible for everyone. Dr. Sheena is a computer scientist, and she also got her PhD in biochemistry from University of California, Santa Barbara. Dr. Sheena and her team are tackling global health challenges like sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, triple damic, which includes COVID, flu, RSV, and managing chronic diseases like diabetes. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Dr. Sheena and learn from her experiences and insights. Hello, Dr. Sheena, welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Uh, nice to meet you, Faisal. I'm doing great, and thank you for inviting me. Great, great, thank you. Uh, Dr. Sheena, the, the concept of uh, self-served health kits is not new. Uh, however, these products traditionally had some challenges. For example, accuracy and reliability of the results, interpretation of the results, and in general, these are not affordable in uh, underdeveloped countries. So how would you overcome these challenges and make sure you can scale your product? Uh, great question. Um, you're right. Diagnostics, you know, when you think of tests, they've always been... Um, you know, you started with pregnancy tests, fertility tests. Those are some of the, you know, the, the earliest people can re remember about diagnostic tests of the first time being able to do something by themselves. And if you notice, most of the technology in the past sometimes just left people either with a result mm -hmm. and then they, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with a positive result? And in, the, in those, in those scenarios, they kind of left hanging. And what mm -hmm. we wanted to reinvent how healthcare should be from the eyes of the, of, of the consumer, the eyes of the patient, if you're positive, help them through end-to-end -end care. So really what Simple Health Kit is, while it is diagnostics, the labs, we actually have the whole end-to-end -end digital platform. Mm -hmm. And if you are positive, you have a telehealth and you have access to care, to prescription. Mm -hmm. So really that whole end-to-end -end journey for the first time, that vision of how healthcare should be, you know, you've innovated in Uber experience, your DoorDash, and all of those amazing innovations. But for the first time, we're doing it for healthcare. Uh, the questions you ask about quality and accuracy, that's, those are very important. And that was almost the fundamental of starting Simple Health Kit. Um, from my background, as you, as you know, uh, both being a PhD in biochemistry, but also in my last journey be before Simple Health Kit, we led a team where we built an at-home urine test. Someone could do it remotely. And in a very easy to use fashion, went to the FDA, got the you know FDA clearance, and it got that product to market. So, it one it was such an amazing experience of showing how innovation can be brought to homes and lives and impact and, and giving that people that for the first time that empowerment. But how do we take it to a massive scale? So at Simple Health Kit, we you know science quality were the pillars. You never want to start a healthcare without putting those pillars like really, really rooted uh, in stone. So quality, regulatory, getting the best leaders in the space who understand all the regulatory is very important. And as we build science, again, I'm a scientist founder, 
co-founder uh, CEO, but taking all the principles of product development very thoughtfully, uh, bringing in the user up front, not building something and saying, I hope it works in consumer, and therefore you're going to have a lot of issues, people not performing the test correctly, don't know what to do. So in the early days, we actually did consumer usability studies to look, how does the user interact with this product? How do we minimize all these errors and typical uh, uh, traditional uh, challenges with diagnostics and all the challenges that you're mentioning? Se uh, second, we really, because I mentioned going through all those regulatory bodies, you have to show correlation. Now you're having different usabilities, different users conducting tests and match them to the gold standard of care. So as you can imagine, both from the design and thoughtfulness from an end user experience, that's really by, you know, that's where we emphasize the focus of. How about affordability? Ex excellent. Now, typical in, in, in the space that we are in, uh, in the world, we are usually people have different layers and third party, like outsource this, outsource different pieces of the pie. And if you think of your outsourcing, there's much more middle, middle layers and middle cost and adding layers. So because we build the technology, so we own the IP, we own the infrastructure, and we own the, the digital health platform, full stack, we're literally going to the enterprise and selling it to, uh, you know, basically making it to be B2B to B2C, to making sure it's accessible for all. Uh, those middle layers are minimized, and so your price point is significantly low. So we beat, you need to beat pricing in almost every category that we are today. And at the same time, it's not just from pricing, from the high value, right? It's not just a test. It's giving you all that access points of getting a follow-up care uh, included as part of the the programs. Yeah. Dr. Shina, what is your perspective about underdeveloped countries? Uh, I think the comment you just made, uh, I'm relating it more to the US market, North America market. But how, how about, uh, you know, for example, India, South Asia, Africa, all yes. those places where people do need support on healthcare. Can this product scale there as well? Yes. Uh, and um, to give you some background, you know, about myself, um, you know, I'm from Goa, India, born and raised in Kuwait, been a refugee, seen disparity, seen hardship, and obviously, you know, U U.S. is definitely a significant improvement in all those countries I've seen, right? However, there's still disparity. And uh, the model we've built is essentially to serve people that need healthcare the most. The way we've even designed the technology stack is where we can go implement the same IP into these countries and work with strategic partnerships in increasing that access and distribution channels in uh, the country. So that is the dream to make it scale. Once we've, you know, obviously we have to work by the way with different understanding the different regulators of different countries, but US usually generally has that one of the highest regulatory bodies um, that we, you know, so we feel, Pretty confident we can deploy this in uh, nation, you know, worldwide. Digital transformation is revolutionizing many industries, and artificial intelligence, cloud, etc., are the key enablers for digital transformation. In your view, how can healthcare be transformed using digital transformation and AI, etc.? Are there any critical use cases in your mind? Yes, this is, uh, in fact, the, the hottest space of healthcare right now of how we can support our physicians, our providers in this journey. Uh, if you look at the current state of healthcare today, there's not enough providers, there's a physician shortage. We need tools to support the decision makers to make the right decisions for the, cons for the, for the, for the patients, for the consumers, right? Uh, so AI is going to play a major role, you know, internally within Simple HealthKit, we have projects in the, in the pipeline, but just to give you where the vision and where the world is, will be moving to is because of these challenges and shortages of physicians and providers in this, in this healthcare system, we will need tools all the way from helping with uh, early detection, how do you identify this is a high-risk patient, and think about it, if you know that if you're able to use AI in the decision making at the point of care when you're, you know, journey, think of like you already predicted 
So this person is on the uh, is on the right and uh, the wrong track. This diabetes is increasing with our diabetes test. You're watching that HbA1c. You probably want to go get the rest of the other vitals getting checked up, and you're really changing that course of that patient's life. So we always look from from the from the eyes of this patient could be me or you and our family members, and if we can build tools to support, you know, people in the journey. Uh, that is really the vision of where AI and healthcare is going to play a major role, impacting decision makers at the provider level. Uh, in, in the U.S., obviously, the health plans, payers, how do they close those gaps in care? And obviously, net-net, it's the end consumer getting the best quality of life with the best tools that uh, tech and healthcare have come together. Let's talk about the front end of the diagnostic a little bit. As you know, there are many wearable products in the market. We have Apple Watch, Fitbit, and these have health-related features. Have you thought of leveraging this ecosystem and automating the front end of the diagnostic? And let me give you an example. Uh, Apple Watch can have detection of a red flag and then notify the user that, hey, you have this condition, you should use Simple Health Kit to perform tests, and then Simple Health Kit takes care of the rest. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm all about technology working in the right way to help the patient in the end. So um, the diabetes use case is, is the, you know, a very easy and very meaningful one, because if you think of diabetes, there's pre-diabetic and diabetic. And as, and as you're watching somebody, and a part of what our uh, offering has, it's, it's a platform. The, the end user can see, oh, I was a 4%, 5% uh, HbA1c levels, that's the, the diabetes, uh, and they, you're tracking it. You can envision that technology connecting with saying, hey, we need to meet these many steps for you to be in the right track. Not only does our solution give you data, we also have internally into our software a really great con a content management system. So lifestyle changes. These are also curated from the CDC, all the mm -hmm. guidelines. So we've already incorporated programs. So you can imagine the world like, hey, this is your diabetes. I'm going to, and this is what Simple Healthcare does, right? We have all these recommendations and features within the, uh, within the platform and then the world where it can connect to your smart devices. You know, you, you need both diet um, fitness part of that whole ecosystem for your health to, to be healthy. So, uh, yes, all our use cases, uh, if not all, can be correlated to some aspect of um, the smart devices that are in play. Healthcare industry has its own dynamics, stringent regulatory requirements, risk factor, and multifaceted medical ecosystem. What are the key traits of a successful healthcare product? What advice you will give to the entrepreneurs who are trying to innovate in healthcare and trying to introduce new products? Uh, great question. Um, with healthcare, you are right. There is the things you don't want to take shortcuts on is quality and regulatory. Right? Make sure your science is good, your product, you're building an amazing product up front. And you've thought, thought through all of those pieces. And if you don't know a certain piece, it's okay. Get the people, get the talent you need to build the right foundation of, of your company, right? So that would be my advice for the entrepreneurs. Um, and in terms of, uh, I want to make sure I address everything. So one, ensure you're, you're building a team on that have the expertise. I always say expertise, the right experience, and lead with empathy. You know, starting a, uh, starting a journey is is not easy. It's in fact the most humbling. With healthcare, it's for me, um, it's bigger than one human, it's bigger than one company, it's bigger than one entity, it's impacting lives of many, like again, our families. So having that empathy to yourself, to your team, in everything you do, and lead with that um, is, you know, I would say the three uh, keys to success for any entrepreneur starting the journey. Walmart has recently announced to team up with uh, Simple Health Kit. How important is that for your company in your growth journey? Walmart is very exciting. Um, the impact it can have on 
on lives and communities. If you think of Walmart, the, national, the largest retailer in the world, but if you think about where it's placed, it's actually placed it, like all over, but especially in places where health deserts, food deserts, it's, it's the only access point sometimes for people just wanting to get care. And they go there, do your groceries, but the, the ability of someone to get a test and get that full close loop care is, is, uh, is of its kind. So from a mission alignment and from the access and the reach of all the lives we can touch, it's very strategic for us. Uh, and we're excited just really about the mission and obviously the business of, of it all as well. You are an inspirational leader. Uh, you were an immigrant. You, in fact, uh, were a refugee from Kuwait, um, and you have led with conviction. Today in the startup ecosystem, we don't see a lot of females leaders. Uh, I'm sure there are many girls watching you right now in, in U.S. and also abroad. What advice you will give to the girls who want to go in the tech careers, who want to go in the entrepreneurship or startup ecosystem? Um, thank you for that. I, um, I've always been passionate about women empowerment as, as early as I can imagine. Uh, and, and seeing, as you can imagine, in different parts and different parts of the world, there's different rights, women rights, uh, and always wanting to be able to say, hey, don't take no for an answer. Um, I, I can, I can definitely remind myself how many times someone said, oh, it's hard. Why do it? Uh, you're going to get no's. And it, it's one of those things. It's about like, just like an athlete or just like anything you do, you start at it. You may not be good, but you don't give up. You figure out a way you get up and you get back up because like I said, I think with healthcare, it's big. You have, you have to be, you have to love what you do. Number one, you have to love this. Like, I love the fact that this can impact person's life they can course correct they can get treatment and I, it, it's everything worth living for the impact it can have and definitely this journey is not an easy journey and it's it's just important to follow through and that's probably what my advice my mom gave me was um you can do anything if you really work hard put your mind to it and just and, and the right things the right doors will open so that's the advice I would give back. Uh, one, I have, I have my kids at home, but at the same time, inspiring women to be entrepreneurs and put yourself out there, take that risk. Um, obviously, as an immigrant, I'll say have plan A and plan B, <laughs> but at the same time, make sure you're doing, you know, uh, don't, don't hold yourself short because you know, I'll be honest, as, as a woman, once you're a mom, <laughs> a wife, an entrepreneur, you're wondering how you can do it all. And, you know, um, I, I, I'm also spiritual. I'm like, with God and your strength and yourself, like, you, you can really do anything if you put your mind and heart to it. Work hard. Thank you very much, Dr. Sheena, for joining our show. I'm sure our audience would have benefited a lot from your insights. Thank you so much, Faisal, for having me. I'm excited. <laughs>